Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always. And today I figured we'd do another discussion video on the upcoming DCS F-15E Strike Eagle from Razbam. Now, just a couple days after my original F-15E discussion video where we talked about the pros and cons of the backseats of the F-15E versus the backseat of the F-14 Tomcat and why I thought more players would be willing and able to hop into the backseat of the F-15E in comparison to that of the F-14 and how that would affect multiplayer missions and squadrons and all that kind of stuff such as filling up mission rosters with the appropriate amount of backseaters. Razbam, after that video, just a couple days after, in their quarterly update, said that they had put their F-15E on hold for a little bit as they were working to finish up their Aviate B Harrier and Mirage 2000. However, subsequently after that, they released some screenshots of the cockpit of the F-15E Strike Eagle coming for DCS, and I figured we should go ahead and hop in and actually take a look at these screenshots, kind of break down what we can see in them, and kind of give my impressions as to how the cockpit is looking, and um, obviously you guys can tell I'm very, very hyped for the F-15E. Um, it is my favorite jet in real life, and uh, I just really like it. I think it's just the coolest jet. I've always thought that um, American Teen Series jets with uh, two seats tend to look aesthetically better to me than the single seat counterparts, but uh, that's just kind of my own thing. So let's go ahead and get started with actually looking at these screenshots. We're just going to go from my um, least favorite up to my favorite screenshot of the bunch and kind of talk about what we can see in the cockpit here, as well as kind of talk about some first impressions like I said earlier. So we'll use a paintbrush here to kind of mark some things out so that way I can kind of highlight things to you guys. Keep in mind that these pictures were posted on Facebook and Facebook degrades photographs very, very heavily. Um, so the resolution of these photos isn't great, but if you take a look at the Razbam Facebook page, say on your phone or on your iPad or tablet, the pictures will look a lot better than they will looking on this video here because we're gonna have the Facebook compression then the YouTube compression on top of that. So if the pictures look a little bit fuzzy to you, um, don't go blaming Razbam for that. That's just a fact of the Facebook then YouTube compression on top of that. But I think it is gonna work well enough for us here to actually be able to take a look at these photos and give kind of a breakdown of what we're seeing. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and get started with our breakdown of this first screenshot here. We can see that this screenshot was taken from the left console looking at the control column down into the right uh, rudder well and off to the right hand bottom side of the instrument panel. And we can see right away the similarities in the avionics suites between the F-A-18C Hornet and the F-15E Strike Eagle. Keep in mind that the Aviate B, F-A-18, and F-15E Strike Eagle are all McDonnell Douglas products, now owned by Boeing. And while Northrop built quite a few components of the F-A-18 Hornet, including a lot of the parts of the fuselage, the tail, and the wings, McDonnell Douglas did design and produce the cockpit of the F-A-18C as a result. And so because of that, it's going to be very easy for DCS World pilots who already have a lot of experience in the Aviate B or the F-A-18C to quickly hop into the F-15E Strike Eagle and feel at home quite a bit. And we'll keep talking and harping on this theme as we go through these images here. Right away, we can already see that the OSBs for the MFDs, the center bottom MFD in the F-15E are very, very similar to that in the F-18C Hornet with the same brightness and contrast uh, OSB buttons on the bottom left and bottom right of the screen. So should already be very, very familiar. But also on top of that, we have a digital engine instruments panel right here, kind of a digital engine control suite that looks very, very similar to the IFE, but we do have a very stark and very different um, setup for the actual fuel um, indicator panel. And so this fuel indicator panel is brought directly over from that of the F 15 A, B, and C, and D variants of the F-15. And you can see this in the bottom right-hand side of the F-15C in DCS World already. Um, if you guys watch one of my um, 1982 Lebanon War videos where I fly the F-15, you'll be able to see this right here on that bottom right-hand side of the instrument panel. So a lot of parts of the F-15C and F-15A are kept in the jet as well as kind of smashing it together with the more digital avionics suites of the F-18 as well. And the original F-15E was actually a rebuilt, remanufactured F-15B. So a lot of these parts 
are very, very similar and interchangeable with the parts of the cockpit in the more albino eagles that are meant for pure air-to-air -air combat. Now, moving on from this um, engine and fuel indicators down here, we can see that we have some circuit breakers down here. Um, just behind the control column, which are the disconnect circuit breakers for the automatic flight control system, or as most people would like to call it, an autopilot. These are very, very, very important uh, circuit breakers in any aircraft in which there is an autopilot, because if the autopilot is doing weird things for you in the cockpit, the first thing you want to do is disconnect the circuit breakers and pull all power to the autopilot to prevent the autopilot from causing a very dangerous situation, like say the autopilot is not uh, correctly regulating the attitude of the aircraft or the role of the aircraft, and you get yourself into a very, very bad situation. Or if you get into a situation where the autopilot uh, disconnect button, where you actually flip a switch to turn the autopilot off, if that is broken for some reason, the autopilot will not shut off. You need to be able to reach those circuit breakers very, very quickly in order to disconnect power to the entire autopilot system to just shut the whole thing off from a, like a hard wiring perspective. Beyond that, we can also see what looks like the uh, jet starter switch right here to actually start the jet. Now, a lot of things in the F-15E, while they're going to be similar to that in the F-18C and, and to a lesser extent the AV-8B Harrier, a lot of stuff is also going to be very different. It's going to be kind of more similar to the stuff we see and the way it's labeled and what we see in the F-16C uh, Block 50 Viper that we already have in DCS because it is in fact an Air Force jet. And so the Air Force and Navy proce procedurally do things a bit differently. And so things are going to be labeled differently. Things might be in different spots in the cockpit. But as a whole, it is going to still be rather um, easy for DCS pilots to move back and forth between the Hornet and the Strike Eagle. So uh, jet starter fuel or jet fuel starter, very, very similar to the way it's labeled in the F-16C. However, that, of course, is on the left hand console just forward of the throttle. And then brake hold. I want to say this is the parking brake, but I haven't read the Dash 5 manual for the F-15E in real life. I don't know if I could even get a hold of one. And I don't really want to share that on YouTube because I just don't want to get in trouble for any reason. But uh, I'm sure that you guys in the comment section will correct me on that. And of course, back to the control stick here, you know, big old control stick. Same thing as what we've got in the AV-8 and the F-A-18C. So that uh, Hornet stick is going to work just fine in the F-15E. Very, very cool. So why don't we go ahead and swap on over and go on over to our next screenshot that was shared by Razbam on their Facebook page. So this one is kind of coming off to the right hand side. We're kind of following the cockpit around to the right hand side, looking at this right hand console now. And we can see that same, what I believe is a parking brake, brake hold, um, that's, that's my educated guess, is right there again. And then moving on, we have our warning panel in the same spot that it is in in almost every Western fighter jet, um, including the JF-17. You have that warning and um, advisory panel on the right-hand side, um, right up against the bottom right of the instrument panel. Very, very important to check that. Make sure nothing is lit up before takeoff, such as your canopy is unlocked, your, your ejection seat's not armed, um, a hydraulic system's not turned on, electrical system's not turned on, whatever it is, that'll be lit up here. Um, just like in the F-18, Harrier, uh, Thunder, every other jet in DCS world, or modern jet in DCS world. Now, moving on, we have a panel here that is labeled engine. And so my only guess for that could be that this is the engine control panel, something a little bit different as compared to the um, F-A-18C and even the F-16C. And the fact that the, most of the engine controls on those two jets are over on the left console near the throttle. Something a little bit different, kind of interesting. I could be wrong here, but uh, that's just my educated guess based on the label ENG for engine here. And we can see generator switches. So maybe it's not that different uh, after all. We've got emergency, um, looks like emergency hydraulic switches here, um, reset switches for generators. Um, and of course the two generator switches. And I'm sure, looking at it here, I'm sure the battery switch is in this panel somewhere as well for startup. Um, so maybe it really isn't that all that different from the F-A-18C. 
Then of course, we've got the ECS panel here. Very, very important. If you've ever spent any time in an airplane with a bubble canopy, you know that it is absolutely horrendously hot in them. Uh, most of the time, even at altitude where it's nice and cold outside, it can get really, 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 really hot inside that bubble canopy. And uh, so a good air conditioner is absolutely a must. Um, and you definitely going to want to bring some sunscreen if you decide to roll up the sleeves of your um, flight suit. Just make sure you keep your oxygen mask on and your visor down or else uh, put some sunscreen on your face too. Um, I've definitely learned that lesson the hard way. Um, interior lighting switches right here, very, very similar placement to that in every other modern jet in DCS world. Um, it's a really good idea that um, a lot of the Western uh, fighter jets that we see in DCS, the cockpit layout is more or less the same. And that's how I jump back and forth between jets and DCS very, very quickly and relatively easily, is the layouts between the jets in the cockpit are all relatively similar with this interior lighting panel being more or less in the same spot on every jet. F-18, AV-8, F even the F-14, and of course now the F-15E Strike Eagle. So good to take note of that, where that is, of course, we can see, you know, we've got displays, day and night master switches, we've got UFC brightness, we've got uh, the instrumentation lighting, we've got console lighting, we've got a chart light and a master caution warning light. Very, very important. If you start to get emergencies, you take some battle damage at nighttime and those warning lights are super bright, man, you're going to get pretty dazzled by those caution lights and you're going to need to turn those down in order to concentrate on flying the jet and getting the jet safely back to friendly territory for an ejection or even bringing it all the way back home. So that is kind of a breakdown of this uh, uh, screenshot here on the right hand console. My guess as to what this thing is up here. Um, is I would imagine that might be the canopy locking uh, system or you know you push it forward to bring the canopy down and push it forward again in order to lock the canopy. If that is not the correct guess, my secondary guess might be a um, switch for the emergency tail hook. Um, but uh, that would be kind of a weird placement for that and might accidentally get bumped and you don't want to do that. Of course, obviously you also don't want to bump and unlock your canopy at high speeds either. But that would be my two guesses for that probably most likely going to be the canopy uh, switch there. So we'll move on to the next screen screenshot. And this is going to be um, what I believe is looking back at the uh, left hand console back or the right hand console back by your right elbow because it looks like we've got the wall between the front seat and the back seat uh, right over here. Um, and then of course we've got hoses for oxygen and whatnot. And from the looks of it, it doesn't look like there's any actual toggle switches for an OBOG system or a LOX system. I believe that F-15Es have OBOGs rather than LOX. Um, maybe the original F-15E that was, you know, the prototype from a rebuilt F-15B, in fact, probably had a LOX system. But these F-15Es that are circa... 2007-ish, I want to say, that's what Razbam was going for, I think, for, like the other DCS World Jets for the F-15E, um, definitely had an OBOG system. As for what this is, I am not totally sure what that would be for. My educated guess is that some sort of emergency oxygen system that can be turned on and chemically generates oxygen to go into the system, or some sort of a flashlight I'm not totally sure. You guys will have to, uh, you know, correct me in the comments down below. Um, and of course, you know, you just, whoops. You, and of course, you just um, use this hose here to plug your oxygen mask hose into that. And of course, you get some uh, good uh, breaths off of that. Definitely don't want to pass out at high altitude. That's for sure. Um, like I said earlier, no um, actual switch to actually turn the system on, so it might just be something that's just turned on automatically on engine start, like in the F-16, which would be really great, because I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally forgotten to turn on my oxygen system in the F-14 or F-18 and almost passed out while passing 20,000 feet or something like that. Um, next. We've got our first look, looking back at the lap, uh, left hand console, looking at the front of the throttle here and back towards uh, some different panels, looks like a sensor panel and back towards the wall between the front seat and the back seat back here. 
Now, my guess here is that these switches back here, which looks like some sort of circuit breakers, or maybe something to do with the IFF system and inputting different uh, modes for the IFF system are not gonna be modeled. Most of those switches that are way back there by your right and left elbows um, in the jets and DCS are not modeled. So that's what would be my guess for that. And they probably don't give anything to gameplay um, unless things like, um, you know, a proper ECM was actually implemented in DCS. Uh, VMAX switch right here. Uh, VMAX, um, that probably means that this is a disconnect switch to allow the jet to pull more Gs than um, would be standard allowed by the semi fly-by-wire system in the, F in the F-15E. It's not a full fly-by-wire system in the F-15E. It is only a like an augmentation system. I'm gonna get the terminology for this incorrect, but it's an augmentation system that is more hydraulically and electronically powered than it is digitally um, powered. Like and full fly-by-wire system like that, what you find in the F-A-18C or the Eurofighter or F-16 or whatever uh, jet you want to compare it to. Now, this changed recently with the introduction of the F-15SA, the Saudi advanced version, which actually put a real digital fly-by-wire system into the original chassis of or airframe of the F-15E and uh, allowed more stations to be put on the wings for the carriage of weapons. Because as you have more and more stations on the outer portions of the wings and say you drop one bomb off the left side but not on the right side, the um, moment of torque caused by the asymmetrical loadout is going to not be able to be handled by a pilot to fly straight and level with just the regular kind of hydraulic and electronic augmentation system that was in the original F-15E. But with the fly-by-wire system and the computer being able to help the pilot to uh, correct for that increased torque on the wings, that will help the pilot keep it straight and level. So as a result, the F-15E has two wing stations on the wings that are there, but are permanently unusable because of the fact that it does not have a true fly-by-wire system. That of course was rectified with the F-15SA, the F-15QA, the um, Qatari advanced version, and the F-15EX, which is the new F-15 that is gonna be replacing the rest of the albino eagles in the USAF and potentially be even more sales across the world for other countries. Keep in mind that the Singaporean and the F-15K, the um, the uh, South Korean Strike Eagles also have the old style hydraulic and electronic augmentation system that is not fly by wire. So they do not have those extra um, wing stations available to them. So something to kind of keep in mind there, kind of cool. And that's something we can kind of dig into with just one little switch here in the cockpit. Um, sensor panel right here, this is probably um, has to do with your radar functions and things like that. I'm Guessing that the there is also the targeting pod functions on this panel as well, um, based on the fact that you do not really need a WSO to fly the F-15E, um, so and to actually fight in the F-15E, it's just a good idea for increased situational awareness, having that team in, in there to help actually uh, do things uh, like uh, one guy working the radar, one guy working the pod, etc. And all the controls for these different sensors are duplicated in the front and back seats. So that way you can switch off, like say the pilot's running the radar, back seat is running the targeting pod, and for whatever reason, the situation calls for it and they need to swap and say the pilot sees something on the ground that, that he can't talk his WSO on. So he takes the pod and the um, guy in the backseat, the Wizzo, he takes the uh, radar and starts scanning with the radar. So things like that, that uh, of course, that's all going to be on the sensor panel here that, that I believe extends all the way out here. So that's going to be a lot of buttons, it looks like, for um, all the sensor control. And of course, we do have the throttle here. The throttle itself looks very, very similar to that um, that is ships with the Thrustmaster Warthog throttle. It looks like we, there's pretty much the same number of buttons, hat switches and boat switches that are on the thumb side of the throttle. So that'd be right here, as well as on the back side of the throttle. So people who have a Thrustmaster Warthog, which is probably the vast majority of DCS world players are gonna have absolutely no problem there. 
And of course, we can see the finger lifts that are right here to actually lift the gates of the throttle down here up and out of, say, the cutoff position and into the idle position or even into the afterburner positions to get those big uh, either F110 or F100 engines uh, up to full blower. I believe that the F15E that uh, Razvam is doing is going to have the F100 engines, the Pratt & Whitney engines, but um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, so also just really cool, just look at, looking at these screenshots, even with this awful, horrific Facebook compression of these images, it looks really nice. We can kind of extrapolate how the cockpit will look, and it looks really, really nice in my opinion. You know, there's there's enough paint chips to make it look like it's a real used F-15E, but it's not beat to crap like the F-14B in DCS. So, um, you know, it's kind of got that kind of Goldilocks zone as to wear and tear. I kind of like the jet, the cockpit's being a little bit more clean. Um, Razvan's other jet that I fly a lot, the AV-8B, the cockpit looks really, really clean. But this one looks like it's maybe a little bit more aged than the AV-8B cockpit, but not to the point where it's kind of um, the labels and things are unusable, like in the F-14B, which I appreciate. Um, so uh, we've also, of course, got our seat uh, strap adjustment there. So with the flick of this uh, knob here, we can uh, tighten our harness keeping us in our ejection seat, very, very important. So that way you're not uh, feeling totally uh, encumbered and strapped in all the time, or especially when you're doing a long taxi to big old airfield like Nellis Air Force Base, uh, waiting to go out for a uh, takeoff on a red flag mission while there's 50 other jets trying to get to two runways in front of you. And that way you can just tighten it up nice and tight right before you take the active. Um, what else can we talk about here? Looks like something to do with the ejection seat back here, some sort of uh, part related to that. Looks like another oxygen tube uh, over here, an air tube. Um, I'm guessing that maybe this air tube on this side is for your G-suit, um, would be my guess. So that way that uh, high pressure air can be blown into your G-suit, squeeze some of that blood back up into your torso and into your brain, keep you from passing out during those high G maneuvers. Um, but uh, that's just a a guess there. Like I said, I haven't read or looked at any real diagrams of the F-15E cockpit. I haven't read, you know, the, the uh, manuals for the F-15E. These are just kind of my guesses based off of prior knowledge here. And we'll go ahead and go on to the last screenshot, which is my favorite screen screenshot, because it kind of gives an overall impression of the cockpit of the F-15E. And I really like the, the lighting settings. Of course, you guys know I like dramatic lighting in my videos. So I guess the screenshot with the most dramatic lighting is gonna be my favorite. And this screenshot, we can really see just a good overview of how things are gonna, gonna look. We can see, of course, the ACES 2 ejection seat right here. I'm sure I'll be using that quite a bit to save my life. And hopefully, if uh, Desert Saker ever decides to hop over and be a Wizzo instead of a Rio, maybe I'll save his life a couple times by hitting that ejection handle as well. Um, but uh, let's see here. We've also got the canopy bow. This canopy bow here is um, very similar in layout and style to the canopy bow of the F-15C or A, B, C, D versions of the jet. Um, a lot of exposed bolts and all that, making it look very, very like brutalist industrial kind of look to it, which is kind of cool. Of course, three uh, rear view mirrors, pretty standard for all American fighter jet canopy bows from the gigantic canopy bow in the F-14 to the F-18C, and of course the F-15 as well. We can see the stick head down here, letting us know that yes, in fact, it is that same stick that is used in the AV-8B and the um, uh, F-18C. So that Hornet stick that you guys bought for kind of a lot of money um, is definitely gonna work really, really well for this jet and uh, it's gonna be perfect for it. And we can see that the cockpit layout of the F-15E here is kind of sort of flipped from the F F-18C and the fact that we can see the standby six pack instruments down here um, that are on the right hand side under the right DDI in the F-18C are now under the left screen in the F-15E. 
Kind of interesting, kind of a uh, juxtaposition there. That might be something to do with, you know, SOPs in the Air Force versus the Navy. They want those standby instruments down below on the left versus the Navy wanted them down below on the right. And it's probably something McDonnell Douglas was like, eh, whatever, you know, you want it where you want it. We'll put it there. No problem. Um, so pretty easy there. You know, of course, it looks like we've got altitude. We've got a standby ADI. We've I'm sorry. This is the altitude. This is probably airspeed. Um Let's make maybe VSI here, and I'm not sure what this one would be. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I'm sure we'll find out soon enough if we get our hands on the F-15E. And, of course, we've got the, uh, the upper left MFD here, the bottom MFD that we already took a look at. We can see that those OSB layouts on here, the option select buttons, are all very much the same layout as that in the F-18C. And as well as that in the AV-8B, they're probably the same actual components because, you know, if you're building something on an industrial scale like MDD is or now Boeing is, might as well just keep commonality with the parts, right? Make it a lot cheaper for the um, end user, which is going to be the Navy or the Air Force or the Marines. We've, of course, got the arming panel up here. So we've got um, the master arm, uh, I believe, up here. And then we've got what I can only guess are probably the um, the master mode switches here for air to ground, air to air, and nav modes. Looks like there's multiple. Whoops. Looks like there's actually multiple switches um, here, are multiple buttons. So it, maybe it's a master caution reset over there as well, because I don't see anything in this screenshot up here where it is in the F-18C. But um, like I said, that could, that's just a shot in the dark. You know, I'm sure somebody's going to correct me in the comments down below. Um, let's see here. It looks like we've also got a selective jettison panel. And we've also got another big switch down here. So I'm not sure this yellow switch here uh, versus this switch down here. These uh, Maybe this is the master arm switch down here. And you because usually master arm switches are, don't have that yellow and black uh, warning uh, type uh thing that uh, is on the um, anything like an ejection seat handle, a uh, canopy uh, emergency release uh, handle, things like that. So that could be that the master arm switch is actually down here, in which case this switch, I'm not totally sure what that might be for. It might be some sort of emergency jettison uh, switch or kind of like maybe an air to air mode switch like is in the F-14 that uh, drops away any air to ground ordinance, but leaves, of course, all the air to air ordinance on the jet. Um, Moving on to the wide angle HUD up here. Very, very cool to see that wide angle HUD. Um, I'm really excited to use that. Of course, it's not so relevant as it is today, other than the fact that it's cool and really, really nice for the pilot to have that nice wide angle HUD as comparison to the kind of skinny HUDs that we're used to seeing on the AV-8, the JF-17, and the F-18C. But originally, these were built for the use of the Lantern uh, targeting and navigation system uh, hooked together. In the F-14, we only have the lantern targeting pod, not the navigation pod. But um, in the F-15E, in its original guise, um, back in the early 90s, um, had the lantern navigation pod on there that would display FLIR on the HUD from that navigation pod to allow the jet to fly in pitch black conditions through mountains at low level and be able to see um, that kind of vision of night vision up there on the HUD um, and is also one of the kind of the one of the very first jets to integrate both line and raster technology for projection onto the HUD, with line being the symbology and raster being the actual imagery from the lantern uh, navigation pod displayed on the HUD up there. And I believe the F-16 Block 40 came after the original F-15E and incorporated a lot of that same uh, line and raster technology to make the nighttime attack version of the F-16, the Block 40 that had that big wide angle HUD, which <laughs> that would be a pretty cool upgrade to the F-16 um, or actually, I guess, downgrade to the F-16 in, in DCS world to get a Block 40 with that kind of weird, funky, big old HUD up front. That'd be kind of cool in my opinion, but uh uh, I digress here, but the UFC here, this, is some, this was something that kind of surprised me. As I know that Razbam put out a poll of their um, uh, fans out there to see whether the F-15E should have the upgraded, I believe, 
post 2005 or six ish upgrade to the F-15E that actually made this a screen for a digital UFC, very similar to what's on the F-18E uh, e and F and I guess E-18G Growler, where they have an actual screen for the UFC that it could be actually be turned over to an EW page um, when you're in combat. So that is something that's a little bit surprising. Maybe they're doing both. It'd be kind of cool if they did both and like make that a, a option in the special options or like a mission editor option to have like a older F-15E for your Desert Storm, your Kosovo, your Yugoslavia kind of missions, and then maybe a later version F-15E for more of your operations Operation inherent resolve over Syria, that kind of stuff um, for a more modern F-15E. I don't know. Um, so we'll have to see what Razbam says about that, which is interesting because I believe the modern version with the digital uh, UFC was the actual winner of that poll, but uh, don't quote me on that. The actual keypad, the inputs for the UFC here, very interestingly, look far more closer to that of what's on the AVAB's UFC in comparison to the actual F-18C UF, U, uh, UFC. Um, so many acronyms, man. <laughs> um, and th that's what the keys look like here. Of course, it's too fuzzy from that awful, awful um Facebook compression to actually see what's on here. I think these are numbers here with a zero down here and then some other numbers here, probably, you know, like TOO, auto, autopilot, uh, tack in, those kinds of things, kind of push tiles that are around here, around the outside, enter, clear, things like that. I actually like the functionality and the way the, the UFC and the F-18C works better to me, in my mind, for whatever reason, it seems to uh, make more sense to me. But, you know, got to deal with what we got to deal with in, you know, obviously want the jet to be realistic and not pander to what we want in a jet if it's not realistic. Of course, we got brightness, not a brightness knob here, probably for the UFC. And then we've got um, volume knobs for the two radios. And then I think these may be brightness knobs for the actual UFC um, screens up here but not totally sure what those be. Those could also be like pull outs um, for clearing out options. Um, we've got a brightness knob that I have to imagine is for the actual HUD up here. Then we've got, um, looks like day night up here. Potent or actually, I think this says A slash A and A slash G. It's too fuzzy to really make out. So potentially different sub modes for air to air and air to ground on the HUD. I don't know. I don't know if that would make any sense. Or maybe these are actually the master mode um, switches for the master modes of the jet. I don't know. We've got what looks like another brightness here. Maybe that's for the raster for, you know, lantern navigation pod uh, projection onto the HUD. And I think we've got a contrast knob over here. Um, let's see what else. We can also see that same VMAX switch over here on the left hand side of the cockpit. And we've also got the top of the throttle over here. And I think that pretty much wraps it up as to screenshots. So, um, all right. So almost forgot this screenshot. I guess I downloaded it and forgot to throw it into my um, Photoshop file here. But uh, anyway, so this is just a screenshot of the upper right-hand side of the canopy bow. We can see the right-hand side of the wide-angle HUD over here. Just a really thick piece of glass. Really interesting. Um, and then we've got the upper right-hand portion of the instrument panel over here. Can't really see anything or really dig in, into anything there. It's just the right-hand side of the instrument panel. Um, as to the canopy bow, it's it uh, seems like maybe a little thing, but I think it's really, really important to get the canopy bow to look really, really nice and look really, really right in terms of geometry and in terms of just the way it looks and the texturing on it. Because I don't know about you guys, but I spend a lot of time looking up in my jet in DCS world, to looking for bandits in a dogfight, pulling hard, trying to get to somebody or, you know, in a roll in maneuver, I'm turning the jet upside down and pulling back and looking up through the canopy bow bringing that center mirror down onto my target before I roll wings level again. So just like any other part of the cockpit, the canopy bow has got to look good. Um, of course, you got that center mirror here. Um, we've got, looks like the chart light right here that we talked about earlier with a brightness knob that was on the uh, right-hand console. Uh, like I said, the center mirror here, the other mirror, we've got a handle here, um, kind of important. Got to have something to grab onto to help kind of bring your body around to look over your shoulder um, in a hard G pull. We've also got this uh, standby compass that's up here that um, 
almost looks like it's bent. <laughs> Obviously, we're not sitting in the uh, position of the ejection seat, so maybe it's facing towards the ejection seat, but it does look almost like kind of bent. Um, I'm sure that's kind of realistic because I'm sure these things are kind of thrown up there in more or less a haphazard manner. It's always interesting to me to see pictures of uh, cockpits of fighter jets and stuff that have exposed wires and cables like this. You can, of course, see a ton of exposed wires and cabling in, near the um, canopy bow and near the front of the HUD in the F-14B Tomcat. Um, you know, whether that's uh, maintenance crews, um, you know, taking a little shortcut rather than fully embedding the wiring into the um, kind of housings that they're supposed to be in inside the canopy bow, stuff like that, because those wires break often anyway, need to be replaced. But anyway, this is probably a power cable to this uh, magnetic compass up here. And then we've, of course, got our shoot queue up here, which is very, very, very familiar to any um, DCS World pilot who cut their teeth on the F-15C before jumping into a full fidelity module. Um, which of course, you know, we get the shoot, shoot, uh, message up here that when you get within the no escape zone with your aim 120 AMRAMs and, um, we can see more cabling coming down here and around across the uh, rest of the canopy. This, uh, cabling down here is probably the same stuff that's coming up here to feed, uh, electricity and, uh, data to the shoot queue and taking information to and from the magnetic compass up there. Uh, magnetic compass, of course, very, very, very uh, important in case uh, you have an INS failure or you need to realign your INS in flight and you have to input your magnetic heading. All, all that kind of stuff, very, very important. And I actually think it's a good idea in the F-15 and the way the cockpit is laid out to have that magnetic compass up there on the canopy bow and out of the way. It's easy to read when you need it because it's just boom right there, but it's up out of the way. It's not taking any space that would otherwise be used for other things in the jet like us uh, it is used in some of the other jets in dcs where that magnetic compass is kind of in a spot that's kind of like well i don't know why that's there kind of kind of feeling to it um of course uh the cockpit in the f-15e just like every other fighter jet post um the f-4 phantom looks very very well thought out very um ergonomic for the pilot and of course for the wizzo I haven't seen any pictures of the back seat yet but i'm sure it's Great back there too. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of breakdown of these screenshots. Like I said, I am super hyped for this jet. It's my favorite jet in the world. And I can't wait to throw all the crazy paint schemes from uh, the Air Force with uh, cool nose art that's been coming out lately on the F-15Es to you know the crazy camouflage that the Qataris are putting on their new F-15s to the really cool uh, desert schemes that the F-15I Ra'am in Israel has on it to um, the really cool gray paint scheme that the Saudis put on their Strike Eagles. All, all this kind of stuff. It's just going to be really, really fun to have this jet, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, Braz Bam, good luck with uh, all the coding and all that for this jet, and uh, I'm sure you'll all make us very happy very soon. And uh, I'm already trying to throw money at the screen to get this guy. So, uh, good luck out there, Raz Bam. And, of course, guys... Uh, uh, fly safe out there and stay healthy. So we'll see you in the next one.